What's going on you guys and welcome back to the a -Ray Show. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can invest into the highly growing dynamic video game industry. This industry is just absolutely nuts. If we take a look at some of these statistics, it will blow your mind. Whether you're a gamer or not, this is an industry that you have to at least think about. Let's be honest. There's 2.9 billion players. That's almost a third of the world that play any sort of video game. And if you're wondering, yeah, of course, there's a lot of free to play games. Well, more than 85% of industry revenue comes from these free to play games. That's things like, for example, in Candy Crush, there's ways that you can skip ads. There's extra lives and power ups. There's tons of potential for free to play games to make money. I mean, 85%, that's huge. On top of that, this market cap for video games is insane. 159.3 billion. And this is in 2020. That is just absolutely nuts. And if you're wondering, of course, this is a huge market cap, but the coolest thing and the best thing about this is video game industry is still growing and at a higher rate than a lot of the other industries. So if you guys want to get a piece of this pie or you guys want to learn where you can start investing into it, like an ETF, for example, stay tuned and we'll cover that. So with that being said, you guys already know, cue that intro. So to be honest, I can go on a huge tangent about the video game industry and about all the different avenues they have to make revenue from esports to streaming to video games on the console, computers, mobile gaming, but I'm not going to do all of that. I just want to show you guys a way that you can invest inside of this industry. And I'm pretty sure that's what you guys are here for anyways. So let's take a look. But before we do that, just make a quick note about Tencent making 19.7 billion right here. So anyways, let's hop into my dividend portfolio. So this is my dividend portfolio. If you guys follow me, you guys know that I love dividend growth investing. But you guys also know that I do a little bit more investing other than just dividends. So if you guys want to see and learn more about how I invest or at least try to learn something about investing then definitely hit the subscribe button and i promise you guys you guys will get tons of value out of it so without further ado let's go inside of my etf portfolio so inside of this portfolio we've got four etfs we got vug voo dgrw and espo so you can see that espo is the only one in this one that has been losing money well, the funny thing is, and I might just discredit my entire argument, but this is the one stock or ETF that I will be talking about in this video. This is the video game industry sector ETF. So we got the Vanek Vectors Video Gaming and Esports ETF. Whew, that was a mouthful. It took me like five or six times to get that right. But anyways, we got this ETF over here and we will be doing a deeper dive on this and about it later on in the video. But for now, you guys can see that I'm down about $12.54 with a return of almost a loss of 9%. So it's not looking too good, but this is a play that I put inside of my dividend growth portfolio to actually get me capital appreciation. So it doesn't look like it's doing that right now, but I believe in the video game industry in the long term. And I believe that this stock or this ETF is going to explode with the holdings that it has. So I'm not too worried about it being at a loss right now in fact i'm just dollar cost averaging getting my quantity of shares up while getting a lower average and hopefully maybe in 10 to 20 years this will be maybe 10x what it is right now so with that being said you guys can take a closer look at all i have over here but let's take a deeper look at what this etf is and what it has before we hop into the details and the holdings about ESPO, let's take a look at how it's been performing over the past year and so on. So the past month has been doing pretty well. It sits at almost $68 as of now. I believe my average is around $73 and we'll see why. So if we hop into the six months or actually year to date, we can see that it peaked at about $81. And yeah, of course, this is where my dumbass started buying. So it is what it is, but you know, we've lowered that cost average. So nothing to complain about here. So you might be looking at it and wondering, why has it been performing so bad? And why am I recommending it as a good stock? By the way, this is not a financial recommendation or anything like that. I'm not a financial advisor. So I just got to put that disclaimer in there. But yeah, why am I talking so highly about this ETF? Well, honestly, it's mostly about the holdings and potential, but let's take a look at how it's been performing over the past year. So in September-ish of 2020, it was about $63. So we're up almost 10%, which is honestly pretty good considering it's been a wild year and up 10% is pretty good. 
but most of its holdings are actually holdings that have a lot of growth potential. So we all know that it doesn't really follow the S&P 500, which has been absolutely insane, but it's kind of following growth companies like, for example, Tesla, Nvidia, things like that. And we'll kind of break it down later on in the video. But anyways, let's take a look at the max. So this ETF was inducted around 2018. So it's almost been three years. And in three years, you can see we started at $29.50. From there, we have a 130% increase. So you're almost doubling your money or you are doubling your money. You're almost 1.5 X in your money, which is pretty good for a span of three years. And this is what I'm really looking for for in terms of growth potential. And this is something that I believe is going to be a recurring theme with this ETF. I believe that we're going to get tons of growth potential and we'll kind of take a look at the holdings now just so you guys can see why I believe so heavily inside of this holding. So to dive further inside of this ETF, we're going to be using ETF.com. This is a resource I like to use to kind of track and learn a lot about different types of ETFs. So I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. All the resources and all the articles that I use will all be in the description down below. So anyways, just looking at some of the analytics and insight about ESPO, ESPO holds about 25 stocks, which is what I consider to be a really good holding amount. So we don't have too many stocks, but we also don't have very little. So this is a good balance in my opinion. So at least we'll be able to reap the benefits of at least the top performing stocks inside of this ETF. On top of that, some of the things that they look for is they look for at least half of the company's revenue to come from relevant industries. For example, they have to be game development, gaming related software, or hardware and streaming services. So honestly, that's just great. That's what we're looking for. This is where the video game industry is really growing. And this is exactly what you want if you're looking to build investments inside of the video game industry and honestly the reason why i chose an etf for this video is just because it's just an easy thing to do you just invest into it and don't have to worry about all the holdings it's a reason why etfs have been so great and less time consuming than some of the other investments so anyways let's take a look and also there are some competing etfs by the way i'm also invested inside of hero over here in my growth portfolio but that's a topic for another video either way in my opinion, both of them are very great ETFs for the video game industry. So anyways, let's take a look at some further things. So we can see that ESPO in the past year is up 85%, which is huge. Even though it's been sucking in this entire recency of 2021. But, you know, we'll talk about that later on. But let's take a look at the holdings. So these are the top 10 holdings. Actually, these are all the holdings. So we got NVIDIA, 10% of this ETFs allocated to NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been insane and this is exactly what we're all hyped to see inside this ETF. We got AMD, another chip company. Man, chips are like basically like drugs. And before I get canceled or removed or whatever it is, just to kind of clarify what I meant, it's very high in demand, there's a shortage and people are reselling it like crazy and people are buying it also like crazy. So it's a good thing for this ETF. So other than that, we got some video game companies, Unity Software, Tencent, and we'll kind of dive a little bit deeper into this. And also Nintendo, Activision, Roblox, EA Sports is in the game, Bandai, and so on. You guys can take a look. There's only 26 holdings. So there really isn't too many holdings at all. But that's a good thing for this ETF because these are all high quality companies, especially these top ones. So with that being said, one of the reasons why it's been dipping so much is because of Tencent and some of these other companies. A lot of these companies aren't U.S. companies. And for example, we all know what's been going on with China and the regulatory issues. And Tencent has been a big issue, or at least it's been kind of taking because of this incident. So with that being said, it's kind of hurting ESPO. But when there's a lot of flames and when there's a lot of turmoil or whatever, this is the best time to actually buy into it. And that's exactly why I've been buying so heavily, not only because these companies are getting kind of hit really hard, but because these are quality companies at discounted deals. So for those of you guys that actually don't know what Tencent is, remember I told you guys in the beginning of the video to remember this, Tencent made 19.7 billion revenue in 2018. For those of you guys that don't know what Tencent is, they own Riot which makes League of Legends, if I'm not wrong, Activision. They have a stake in Activision. They don't own the entirety of it. Same thing with Riot, I believe. They also own Epic Games. For those of you guys that don't know, those are the owners of Fortnite. And we all know how poppin' Fortnite used to be. Those are like 
my big college days, you know, everybody used to be playing it. And I think people still play it to this day. They also own games like Candy Crush, Supercell, which owns Clash of Clans. Those are the good old games, you know, mobile phone games. People spend tons of money on that. Tencent is not just a mobile gaming company either. They own tons of other stuff from WeChat to streaming. They own stakes in so many companies that it's just really hard to name every single one. I have a list in front of me and trust me, it's a lot of companies. So with that being said, man, this is a perfect opportunity to buy in a growing and a huge demand industry like the video game industry. I mean, if we just take a look at the revenue reach in Asia Pacific, and this is the region where Tencent's at and some of the other larger corporations inside of the ESPO ETF, 72.2 billion. That's insane. I mean, this market has a huge potential. If we just look at the video game industry as a whole, we can see it's consistently growing. And this is exactly what we're looking for as investors inside of this industry. And by the way, guys, if you guys want to see me do a deeper dive, let me know in the comments down below. Or if there's another industry you guys want me to take a look at, I'm a pretty avid gamer if i'd say so myself i'd be gaming sometimes i carry my friends and whatnot you know uh warzone so yeah i know a little bit more about this industry than some of the others but i'll happy to research so let me know down in the comments down below but anyways if we take a look at the gaming industry revenue share we can see that china and japan are in the top three so china in particular is what we're looking at and man right now if the markets in china are really getting hit because of the regulatory issues of course, there's some risk involved, but I think this is the perfect potential and a perfect chance to actually buy the dip and hopefully it will go up over time, especially if you're investing in the long run. These companies are still going to make money. There's more and more avenues every single day, every single week, more games coming out, more events, more technology being created. I remember like people are doing things about artificial ai and all this stuff that i don't even understand it's insane so there's tons of potential and that avenues and streams of revenue for this industry are just going to keep growing so to kind of wrap it up for this video let me know if you guys are investing inside of this etf personally i think it's a great etf because you don't have to really worry about it too much it also gives exposure to some of the biggest entities in foreign markets like tencent for example but you can also invest into some companies that aren't in the chinese regulatory issue field uh, for example, you can just stick with NVIDIA or whatnot. There was also some for other things like Activision was there as well. So let me know what you guys are doing, whether it's individual stocks, if you guys are investing inside the video game industry or not, or if you guys like ESPO as an ETF. Once again, guys, let me know what you guys think about my videos. I really do appreciate any feedback. And also, guys, make sure to hit the like button if you guys got any value. And if you guys want to stick around, Hit the subscribe button. That really does mean a lot. By the way, guys, thank you for 100 subscribers. We finally hit it. So I appreciate that a lot. Let me know, guys. Give me all the feedback as possible. And guys, remember, everybody eats.